I am Bob Labriola. This is Craig Wolfley. And since it is the day after Friday Night Lights, Wolf, you know what that means. Shells. Shells. Your you mean pasta? No, 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 no. What I mean is no pads. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Mike Tomlin uh, had him take off the pads. Last night was a pretty physical practice, Friday Night Lights. It was. Pretty physical practice. You got some guys a little bit nicked up. Tomorrow is family day. Uh, that is usually another physical session usually punctuated by the goal line drill, first one of the summer. Um, Mike Tomlin is fond of using the goal line drill or ha- staging the goal line drill on family night because his thinking is players are less likely to want to get their butt kicked in front of their loved ones. True. But that's here, a great that's, point. That's for tomorrow. Here we are today. Um, you know, it makes some sense, even though I know this bothers you and your partner, if he were here, that... Uh, they're kind of taking it easy. Labs, right? Labs, let me lament a little <laughs> bit. You know, you have a night practice like that. And one of the good things about it, it's like you said, very physical practice. Guys really coming out there competing hard time after time. The whole night long to me was one good fist in the face, bash, and have a set too. But then you turn around, and what primarily has been done in years past, this is kind of like that grind period that uh, we kind of experienced like the first, oh, like two weeks of doubles. You know, (laughs) this was back-to-back hard practices normally coming off a night practice to a day practice, and it kind of tested the mettle of everybody. You know, who bounced back, who's the tough guy. We could be able to get the violin music in over this or, or what. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but that's exactly it. You know, I mean, you kind of tested that, that guys. And so I was, I, I must lament the fact that they are just in shells, but I understand also looking forward to the goal line tomorrow. That's for sure. Okay, so let's go back to uh, last night, Friday Night Lights, and talk about some of the things uh, that we saw in, as you mentioned, a, quite a physical little session. Uh, it started with Backs on Backer, second one of the summer. Um, What did you see? You know, it was really interesting because everybody starts taking their place early, all the media guys, because you really want to see us. We we saw the first one out here. Now you want to see who comes back, who progresses, who digresses. But what we saw was, number one, and to me, the star of the night really was James Conner, showing that he's got, man, he's got a stiff backbone. Last year, after that Jacksonville game, when he gave up the blitz and then threw the pick, you know, people are saying, oh, he can't pick up the... Boy, let me tell you, in two backs on backers, this guy is almost undefeated. He just looks stout, tough, took the blow right down the middle, used his feet to ride guys to the inside or outside, whatever he needed. But a great job, I thought, by James Conner. Yeah, I'm going to stick with the uh, running backs. And Jalen Samuels uh, had a very, very difficult uh, time of it the first session. Difficult uh, being an understated yeah, okay. word there. Um, and uh, he really came back. I won't say that he was undefeated or anything, but he was much more competitive. Uh, and really, that's one of the things that the coaches look for in that drill, to see exactly. if you get your butt kicked, do you come back, you know, show a little backbone and uh, some fight. And the and, man did. And the man did. And so, um, you know, he said coming out of college that uh, they didn't ask him to do much pass right. blocking. Uh, that was that was proven to be correct uh, in the first backs on backers. But, uh, you know, maybe I- I'm not going to proclaim him, you know, Le'Veon Bell in that respect, but um, he took a positive step forward. Let me put it one step further, Bob. I'm going to say redemption. Okay. okay. That's a good way to do it because the way he, he, you know, he kept getting up and battling the first time, but he was battling poorly. This time he battled well and he battled fiercely and there was no, there was no hiding. You know what I look for? When guys get their butts kicked, they kind of hide. They get lost in the, you know, behind the guys in the line and they're tying their shoe and the coach calls their name. Oh, coach, I'm sorry. I got to tie my shoe. You know, they're looking for ways to ease out. This kid wasn't. Jalen looked like a guy, okay, I know I didn't perform at the level I want. Let me have another go. And he had himself a good go. So uh, what about the linemen? You had to be over there a little bit last night. Oh, absolutely. You know, Keon Adams just keeps impressing you. By the way, I'm just going to use him as a transition because whether he's rushing on an offensive lineman or on the backs, this guy just has move after move of butter. I mean, he is smooth and putting his linkages together. He gets a nice, he does a nice job of getting hip to hip on guys with an uppercut. He will use the swim. He does, he just, he's just got a natural feel for pass rushing, whether he's rushing the, the linebacker or on the backs, like I said, or tight ends, or on the offensive tackle. So he's always progressing, turning, whether it's a tackle or whoever, 
rushing on that third of a man. He doesn't go down the center that much, but when he does, he still packs some power. So I like this guy here. Well, let me say, uh, you know, a guy that uh, I have been critical of uh, in the past is Jesse James in terms of uh, his uh, ability to be, uh, you know, a force at the end of the line of scrimmage right. from the tight end position. Uh, I'm still not, I'm not ready to proclaim Jesse James the second coming of Mark Bruner, but um, he is, to me, looks better. Uh, he looks uh, stronger, I don't know, tougher. I mean, I, I hesitate to use a lot of these adjectives because, um, you know, the, the implications of them in terms of what he was previously. So, but he, he looks like he's better at it. I would say that Jesse Moore enthusiastically backs up getting a little bit violent. I like that. You know what I mean? He's, he's, yeah, he's really, that's nicely put. yeah, I think, you know, um, I watch him. In the first go around in, in backs on backers, he was terrific. Now, he wasn't quite as good last night, but that's, you know, you, you have, he was willingly engaged in, in whatever he needed to to get, you know, some, some good hits in there. And his, his physical work, be it on, uh, when he's on the line of scrimmage as an inline tight end, taking linebackers off the ball, he has looked much better, much more willing to mix it up and use his power and strength. Uh, he's getting to be a much more complete tight end, and I think you're right on with that assessment. So anything else real quick uh, or not? I, no, I do like our man Chooks Okafor, okay? okay? Chooks is, uh, and we got a new Ilkin rule, which states that if you win your one-on-ones with absolutely zero technique and still manage to win, you got a chance of being a player, okay? And one of the things that we've seen with Chooks, he doesn't use his hands very well, but he is a powerful man with good feet and is able to position himself. Uh, you can ask Adenahe, you know, the defensive end, uh, you know, when he broke him in half and slammed him. Chooks is a very powerful guy. I'm kind of excited about it. And there's a couple other guys like the Matt Thomas, the linebacker, and R.J. Prince, uh, the offensive tackle, that uh, guard tackle. He's playing all those positions. Got to do, do more than one thing. You yeah, know exactly. I mean, right? You know, you, you got to you got to master more than just one one position. So these are guys whose arrow, are, as Mike Tomlin puts it, is pointing upwards. So we're looking forward to more from these guys. Okay, that'll do it here for us. Just quickly on the injury front, um, had a number of guys that, that missed a day with, you know, what can be characterized as day-to-day -day like injuries, Joe Hayden, Brian Allen, uh, Hay Bay didn't finish practice and Juju didn't finish practice. Um, hopefully we'll get those guys back out here tomorrow. No new news on any of the other things that I've mentioned uh, in greater detail of some of the guys that are out. Uh, Bud Dupree did confirm, have a concussion, so he's in the protocol. We'll do what's appropriate there in terms of getting him back when he's ready to go. The rest of the things are camp-related type things, uh, so we'll continue to push through those things. I'm um, just continuing to focus on situations uh, as we work. The longer we're here, the more important situations are, the more we should be able to infuse situations into the work. Two minute was the focus of today's work, and uh, so we'll continue to work uh, in that area all in an effort to get ready. Uh, we'll be in the stadium here very soon, so obviously we got to check some of those boxes in terms of preparedness. Questions? Was anything specifically you like from two minute drill? You know, just first time out, uh, I just want to see guys communicating. Uh, mutes are not good. Guys that are talking through scenarios, hey, watch the chains, guys trying to get out of bounds, etc. cetera. Uh, that's what you're looking for the first time out. Uh, and it wasn't any shortage of communication, so from that standpoint, I like what I saw, but I'll look at it. Uh, in greater detail via video. What kind of practice is that for your defense, knowing how much of a fast-paced offense they'll see during the year? You know, um, that's one thing that they don't have control over, um, the pace of the offense. So th the bottom line is they have to be prepared for whatever the offense chooses to do. Um, Two-minute challenges and them, them in that way and prepares them. Uh, and that's just part of this process. It's going to be It's going to be a defining thing for us. What did Stephen Ridley show the last couple games last year that made you want to bring him back for another chance? You know, I just liked his approach to it, man. To get on a moving train uh, is a difficult thing. Um, he fit in um, and, and put his hand in the pile. And um, so we appreciate it from that standpoint. Um, us doing business with him now is not in reaction to that. Um, we want to give him a clean opportunity to, to be on the train when it leaves the station to, you know, to compete. And so, you know, we appreciate what he did a year ago, but it really has no bearing on, on where this thing goes here in 18. Anyone else? Do you, do you know when AB might be back at this point at least? Or? Um, no, it's day-to-day, -day, um, you know, like some of the others. Um, 
we'll, we'll keep you informed as, a, as, a, as the circumstances from a health standpoint changes on any of these guys as day to day. I'm just not going to stand up here and give you a laundry list because I'll be talking a long time this time of year. All right, thanks. Thank